rules of nature. Yes. Mm -hmm. Knew it was going to devolve into that. But you know what? That's all well and good. I'm glad that it, uh... I'm glad that it, uh... I'm glad that you got that out of the way. (laughs) Because it never fails to to make me laugh. So, apparently, uh, yeah, the... <clears throat> Casual Geographic has uh, got a new video out, and it's called The One Rule of Nature School Never Taught You. So... You don't talk about nature? No, I hear a lot of people talk about nature. In fact, they made an entire TV show based on that. In fact, well, this YouTube channel is about that. We don't talk about nature. Yeah, sorry. So, The One uh, Rule of Nature School Never Taught You. So... There's a lot of rules that, you know, they told us in school that honestly don't matter. For instance, the whole I before E except after C is bullshit. Mm-hmm. Uh, turns out that Columbus did not discover the Americas. Turns out the Vikings did it several hundred years before he did. And not only that, but also uh, also just... <laughs> here Here's a little historical tidbit. I'm not... Actually, I shouldn't share that one because last time I did, I literally made, like, a group of people have an existential crisis Mm -hmm. because everything that they thought they knew about history got flipped on its head and they were just like... (laughs) But, yeah, anyway. Also, your whole Paul Revere story. Oh, that? <laughs> His professor was like, Paul Revere. And he was like, actually. Yeah, I corrected his my... professor hi- was a thing bad about it. Yeah, my pr- my history professor, who, by the way, is still a tenured professor at the college I was at, basically was upset at the fact that I pointed out that Paul Revere was not the great hero of the revolution that everyone, everyone built him up to be. Just <clears throat> his name happened to be more of a ring to it in a song. Yes. Well, an, poem, an epic poem. poem. It was a Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Longfellow. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> it, school has taught us a lot of things. Some of them very useful. Other things not very useful. But... Mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. Why would I need to know that? I don't know, but I know it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, anyway, so we have this video by Casual Geographic here. Let's check it out. Here we go. Hello. Hello. Where are your ears? You have been... Did- is that orangutan just eat its baby out of there? She wants to come in the... No, it's a squirrel. Ah. Yeah. Thankfully, squirrels are really good about, like, landing on their feet yeah, and living. it'll reorient itself and kind of glide a little. Yeah. That was a funny edit. Yeah. You have been consistently lied to your entire life, and the biggest source of some of the most unprovoked lies is school. Yes. School really told us that this dude in 92 discovered America, that quicksand and giant Venus flytraps were way more of an issue than they ended up being, <laughs> that writing in cursive was the only way you'd ever be taken seriously, and my personal favorite, whenever a teacher would say, this won't slide in college. The whole time, your calculus professor at 5 p.m. can end up your beer pong partner by 11. Oh, yeah, like <laughs> college professors compared to high school teachers and middle school teachers. <clears throat> they don't give a shit. No, exactly. They don't care what you do. They're you much paid more to be back. in that class. If you don't come to class, they don't give a shit. Exactly. You, you still paid them. Yep. Also, there were a lot of teachers who were like, you won't always have access to a calculator. I bet they feel real smart right now truth that insists on being spread and before we get to Holy that shit. story time so back in the 70s ornithologists noticed something pretty disturbing even for them 
Fola is a remote island over 200 miles off Scotland, and for generations, migratory birds, specifically Arctic terns and one of the ops of Happy Feet, the skewer, use it as nesting grounds to raise their oh, chicks. Look how and a group of ornithologists noticed a gruesome trend of chicks with pretty graphic injuries. Some chicks looked like they had a leg or two ripped off. Ooh. For others, the same, but with their wings. Some chicks even had their heads divorced from their body, for sure yeah. irreconcilable. And while Brother. some of the chicks somehow survived being mutilated, scientists had no idea what was causing this sudden rise in amputweeties. At first, First, I guess otters or even hedgehogs, but it turned out to be neither. You want to know what it was? I promise you, you'll never guess it. I'll even give you a chance to try. Comment what you think. I bet you're wrong. To be honest, I have no idea because I can't think of. Then I don't themselves. know where that is and what other animals would live right there. <clears throat> well, it's in the Northern Isles of Scotland, so. Damn. Yeah, and most of my nature knowledge is. Like pinpointed to this area in Australia, some Africa. I don't really know a lot about European nature, to be honest. I know they got hedgehogs, which I'm jealous of. Yeah. So I would love to just see a hedgehog running around in my yard because they're cute little bastards. The answer? Sheep. Yeah. Sheep. Oh. Scientists observed Damn. grazing sheep stumble across a defenseless chicken without a second thought or really even much of a prequel. I think I knew they had sheep in Scotland, but I definitely don't think I would have guessed sheep. Yeah, I knew. Well, sheep always seem to be, like, very docile creatures that yeah. never took in, like any aggression against any uh, animals. That's weird. Although, I will say this. There was a video, this, this video online uh, showed up. Joe Rogan watched it. This little baby chick fell out of a tree. You know, fell out of its nest out of a tree and was on the ground. And a deer just so happened to be in the yard that uh, that it fell into. The deer walked up to it, looked at it, got down, and ate it. Ate it. Yeah. I actually uh, heard that from someone just like a couple weeks ago that like deer actually are kind of omnivorous to an extent. And I was just like, really? It's like, I only heard that recently. Yeah. Well, I did hear that recently. <clears throat> kind of fucked up, ain't it? Yeah, a little scary. And eat them. Sometimes a sheep would snap off a leg for a premature drumstick. Other times they might grab one by the head and initiate a permanent separation. No! Swallowing skull and all whole. From 1973 to 1980, nearly 700 baby birds have been victimized by the business end of a carnivorous Q-tip. In the grand scheme of things, that's only... <laughs> I never heard that referred to as that, a carnivorous Q-tip. That is really good. Well done, casual. Well yeah. done. <laughs> a debt in the thousands of thousands of birds born in that time. But then again, nobody expected sheep to be involved in foul play. And that goes back to those yeah. lies I told you about. So in science class, we were taught this rule. Herbivores eat plants, carnivores eat meat, and those with culinary commitment issues are called omnivores. Yeah. The rules are never as simple as they play it out to be. Ever. And for a lot of us... Like, for instance, if I told you about... If I asked you about bears... <clears throat> what would you assume they would be? Omnivores. Omni uh, yeah. Uh, would you? Yeah, they are omnivores. But so many people out there are convinced that bears are carnivores. No, no dude. Bears eat berries and, and uh, honey and stuff like that. Yeah, but that's the thing. They're just convinced that because they're these big burly beasts of burden, that everyone's just like, oh, they must be carnivores. No. They'll numb down some berries if they get the chance for sure. Oh, yeah, and they love the shit out of some honey. Mm -hmm. That's where it ended, but of course, nature's more complicated than that. It's like a spectrum, and on one end you have obligate herbivores, as in they're obligated to eat just plants or starve to death. Here you got animals like koalas, sloths, and a dead-eyed plush toy, the bear Cuscus. Then you have the uh -huh. same concept, but obligate carnivores, like cats, mm -hmm. of every kind. Yes. And smack in the middle are your omnivores. But there's also facultatives, and basically that means most of the time you'll find them at one end, but every once in a while they'll borrow a meal plan from the other side. Polar bears are hyper carnivores. Well, I mean, if you think about it, from seals, but ooh, rarely they'll switch cats. It up to berries. Huh? Cats are obligate carnivores. Yes. But they like munching on plants, too, for some reason. Yes. Like, they like catnip. It's weird. Like, you have to keep certain plants away from your house cats because they're poisonous to them and they will munch on them. I just love this view right here. This seal's just chilling. This polar bear's just like, 
I'm gonna eat you. <laughs> <laughs> he's just like he's like do 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 do. He's just like he's like he's like why did everybody run away? He's like I was having a fun time relaxing here. He's like he's he's like he don't even know. Mm-hmm. I'm about to I'm about to shit him out in a few days. <laughs> Hypercarnivores are most yeah, I remember that. He's like, that's a very colorful chicken. It looks tasty. Bubble. So even though most of what goes down his gullet is bamboo, protein in the form of meat is never really off the table, which makes them... It's still a bear. Right? Okay. That's the thing. Pandas are bears. Like, they eat meat as well. Bamboo is just what they have the easiest time getting a hold of, probably. And it's what they're most used to in terms of, like, their diet. But that doesn't mean that they're like, oh, hey, look at that. Yeah, if something decides to be (gasps) stupid enough to get close to them, like... Oh, yeah. They might take the opportunity to have a different kind of snack. And they're not the only ones. Almost the opposite. Almost every herbivore you can think of is actually facultative. Even the ones you wouldn't expect. That's how the good vibes vegan aqua blimp has also been known to snag fish from nets for themselves. Oh, then you got the normally vegetarian shell jockey, the tortoise. I mean, I never actually knew that. I didn't know that manatees were considered to be herb- herbivores only. I mean, I kind of think I knew that a little bit. Like, I heard they eat, like, seaweed and stuff. Yeah. But something about the fact that they live in the ocean just kind of automatically made me think they might snack on a fish every now and then. If it lives in the ocean and it doesn't have the, um, what are they called? The filter type things that whales have. Oh, gills. Not or no, gills. no, the, uh, the uh, teeth type. The brushes. That I've they heard. eat plankton with. Yeah. If they, they live in the ocean and they don't have that, I'm probably assuming they're snacking on something else that lives in the ocean that's alive, you know? Yeah. That's not, that's not a plant or coral. Well, I do know that whales, like, a lot of whales eat krill. Yeah, Kr- krill and plankton, basically. I just can't remember what their freaking teeth are called. There's a name for them. They're not really teeth. Like, Hold on. It's bothering me. I used to know it. <laughs> uh... Baleen. Baleens. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Okay. The more you know. It's basically a thing that just allows them to pick plankton <clears throat> and krill out of the water with. Yeah. Yeah, basically, like by, by just swimming along and like a bunch of water, essentially. <laughs> nets for themselves then you got the normally vegetarian shell jockey the tortoise turning a rabbit carcass into a cookout Ooh. they've also been Man. known to plot on and consume given snapping turtles birds. to be fair that's you can literally have to get to taken off a census by a mobile boulder that's more about you than him a mobile boulder jesus christ there was even that time india released twenty-five thousand flesh-eating turtles to deal with the whole corpse population problem in the ganges Whoa. yes uh It, it didn't work, by the way. But by far, the biggest culprit of covert carnivory are deer. The same deer that's yes. used as a poster boy for the middle child of the food chain. What did I tell you? Will occasionally get calories from something like a past tense bunny. Oh, a couple years ago, researchers wanted to see just what happens to the human body after the soul evacuates, and basically set up these body farms to see how they decompose. As you can probably guess, photos would go viral featuring deer chewing on human bones. Okay. That's disgusting. <laughs> Scavenging. Bambi, no! Through the man made remains like vultures. In 2015, researchers in North Dakota set up nest cams for a 24 hour live stream of the hatchlings. And not only did the footage catch deer enjoying an extremely late term omelet, the servants actually outdid the foxes and weasels in that area, i.e., the ones you'd expect that from. And it wasn't just them being opportunity merchants, some of those deer went out of their way to get to them. 
And in Canada, scientists were oh, looking crap. to study different species of birds and so trapped them <clears throat> using mist nets. Only for the unhinged ruminants to stroll in and eat the trapped and struggling birds alive, Dang. right out of the nets. Growing up is realizing Bambi would have 100% turned on Thumper if times got tough. <laughs> Oh, yeah. It's now believed that a nutrient deficiency and a food shortage is really all it takes for an animal to go from herbivore to fern gore. Because one thing about is animals, that a wallaby? They... No, that's a that's a kangaroo. Really, all it's it takes kangaroo munch on what looks like a mouse or something. For an animal to go from yeah, this kind of thing, it's probably because what one thing we'll about have to animals... censor a bit of just because of the yeah, it's pretty it's pretty violent YouTube stuff. Yeah. They don't care. A deer not finna pass down a chance for easy protein. Oh yeah. Textbook says I have seen that Twist particular is, clip every before. Every herbivore on Earth is facultative, meaning they'll take. I think that's what somebody told me to look at whenever they were like, "Yeah, look at deers are actually deer eat snake." Sometimes eating on animals, and I'm just like, "He's fucking eating that thing like a spaghetti noodle." <laughs> Chewing on it like a nerd's rope. Yep. Yeah. A predator's playbook if circumstances call for it. That's how you get normally docile horses treating baby birds like popcorn chicken. Or that time cows in Australia were caught slurping pythons like fruit roll ups. All because they <laughs> Even better than our analogy. <laughs> <laughs> They were apparently feeding for phosphorus, even giraffes. Yeah, they're not safe either. The verticality merchants of the motherland will often feed off the bones of other animals. Not really swallowing them, but more like licking and sucking on it paws, so their saliva can leach off nutrients like calcium and phosphorus. There have also been cases of the camel leopard cosplaying antelope snatching up birds to feed on <laughs> So stupid looking. <laughs> yep, yet one kick from that leg will literally send you flying and possibly remove your head from your body. That's terrifying. Yeah. Their misfortune. So far, we've learned three things. One, most herbivores are about as vegetarian as their options. Two, baby birds are really the Kit Kat bars of nature. Oh three, no! <laughs> see what you saw it too, didn't you? Yeah. Everything in his power to get up out of there. His entire friend group would have had his hide if it got to that point. Which, of course, brings us to hippos. And this is where things get complicated. At this point, it probably surprises exactly none of you that the four-legged assassination cetacean can have a hankering for flesh. Yes. Hippos have been seen eating carcasses and even resorting to cannibalism. It's yes. complicated because for a while, we thought it was the same deal as before, just animals switching it up when their primary food source is compromised, which would make hippos facultative herbivores, as that word again. Except more and more scientists are coming to the conclusion that hippos eating meat aren't just scavenging or being opportunists. It's just hippos hippoing, as in hippos will put themselves in a position to catch a body and subsequently feed on it. There have been reports of hippos murking livestock and seemingly they're just omnivorous. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of guess that. Seems they're more omnivorous than than herb than you know like herbivores. Mm -hmm. And some even believe hippos will purposely <clears throat> park themselves in a river, migrating animals have no choice but to cross, just so they can turn the casualties into calories. Sometimes that involves punking crocodiles out of food, and of course you already oh. know hippos are not. I mean. When you're fat, you're fat. Yeah, uh, I know. I'll, Trust I'll fuck me. Fuck up a burger or a salad if you put it in front of me. You know what I mean? <laughs> like... Agreed. <laughs> Friendly fire. All this means hippos might not even be herbivores at all, but identify closer to the omnivore side of the spectrum. And that's why it's complicated, because now you're probably asking, what's the difference between a facultative herbivore and a straight up omnivore? And there's an answer. I just really couldn't tell you. Like, you could say facultatives eat mostly plants but can resort to meat Bye. as a fallback where omnivores can normally go either way, but I'd be lying if I said I didn't just make that up on the spot. The moral of the story, I mean, that's what it's I way assume. more complex than just putting labels on things Makes and calling sense. it a day. Yeah. Hey, for example, this. That is a common diker, and it's an antelope less than two feet tall found in sub-Saharan Africa. That's what I was about to say. This. That is a common diker, and it's an not sure if we can get away with saying that. I don't think I want to say what I think he said. Diker. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't sound very good. Well, you know the term. The term dike used to refer to like a, a like a like a miniature dam. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Long You're referring time to ago. it in that context. Yeah. Yeah. It. Language is weird, y'all. An antelope less than two feet tall found in sub-Saharan Africa. 
and I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's the only antelope that regularly eats meat. Along with the shrubs and grasses you'd expect, the meal plan for this antelope undertaker often involves combing through corpses, along with lizards, frogs, small rodents, and you guessed it, baby birds. Oh. Because a good percentage of their diet requires other animals to diet with the tea silent, I'd call the diker an omnivore. But then, you got this. The moral of this Which story is just nobody is able to pass up chicken what? nuggets. What? Oh yeah. Pretty loving, pretty privileged acorn hoarders of the rodent world. Many will tell you that with a grocery list of mostly plants, fruits, nuts, and seeds, the squirrel is mostly herbivorous. But squirrels I know are for also a fact. infamous for raiding birds. See, I, I don't think that I've ever seen one or heard of one like just straight up eating the actual bird but i know they'll still eggs I've yeah i know that I, that's but i didn't know like they resorted to like you know post you know post egg you, you know. know they had the happy meal with the nuggets with the mcnuggets in it and turning creamy poultry into protein and yeah they do this a lot on occasion, you'll see squirrels pack up chickens and snakes. <laughs> see, he's literally eating fried chicken. Holy shit. I don't blame him for that one. I don't either. He's probably like, this is the most delicious shit I've ever had in my entire like, life. Oh my gosh. No, no, no. <laughs> like, holy fuck, this is a gold mine. There was even a story of a pack of Russian squirrels ganging up on a stray dog and eviscerating the canine alive. Each of course it had holy to be Russia. Rap. Of course it had to be fucking Russia. Scurrying off with their share of flesh. Mother yeah, Russia, so squirrel cute. crack you. Now, they're not the only rodents that go rogue either. Normally grass-eating prairie dogs have been known to savage baby ground squirrels and on rare occasions Ooh. even eat the remains. In case you're curious, Damn. they do this by shaking the baby violently until their existence gets revoked. That's not even my worst rodent fact in the chamber. They literally in kill it via shaking baby syndrome. <laughs> what the fuck? All right, it's dead. That, that is Forty-three-year-old woman. Extremely brutal. When it was found deceased in her flat, and with facial lesions and lacerations, and the fact that she was naked from the waist down, first responders thought it was a special victims unit kind of crime. Except it was later determined that she had expired to pneumonia. The desecration of her corpse was caused by her pet golden hamster. Not only did the pet feed on her vacated vessel, law enforcement would find the hamster's makeshift burrow containing human skin, flesh, and muscle tissue. Oh. I mean, that doesn't entirely oh. surprise me just considering, you know, when animals mm. get in dire straits, they will do what they have to do. Yeah. It's like, but still, people dog. are terrified of, ha like, people are like, like, I'm terrified of having a cat because they can eat your corpse when you die. And I'm just like, dude, if I die in my house and nobody realizes it and my cat's not being fed for multiple days, let him snack on me. Like, I want him to be okay. Yeah. Is that a little bit fucked up? Yeah, but he's got to do what he's got to do. He's a fat boy. Yeah. I don't want him to starve just because I croaked because I take bad care of myself. You know what I mean? I hear you. I hear you. But that shouldn't even really be a surprise since hamsters are known cannibals. But what you might not know is that sometimes it can be caused by corn. Researchers at the and university... And you have to be careful when you're breeding little rodents like that because some of the dads will snack on the babies. I you, Yeah, I read about that. Yeah, if you don't separate them at the proper times and stuff. Guinea pigs are the same way this out by accident when they tried to figure out why the female hamsters under their care kept domering their own children. Through some likely traumatizing trial and error, they figured out that just a corn diet was even a hamster missing vital crucial, crucial vitamins, specifically B3. They figured that out because once they added B3 back into their diets, the mother hamsters suddenly remembered how to mother. And the crazy part is, ah. that can happen to people. Vitamin B3 deficiency can lead to plague. A disease associated with diarrhea, dermatitis, dementia, and eventually dying. So in a weird twist, an unbalanced diet can really lead to spawn wrecking rodents, and they're not the only known cannibals in nature. Chimpanzees That's are a great he's example playing, of uh, Ridley's theme in the back. <laughs> it's a remix of it. Sounds pretty bitching. Well, we just approached Mike's nightmare. Yeah. Animals don't <coughs> care. 
Chimps have been known to de-life their rivals and devour the body. Now to us, it's horrific and it makes chimps the spawn of Satan. To a chimp with no legal system or a sense of morality, just a will to live, it's common sense, murdering yeah, your rivals Tuesday. to protect your food supply and not letting easy protein go to waste. And before you judge, early humans reportedly made the brains of terminated hey. children a hey, somewhat- you share? Thank you. <laughs> Before you judge, early humans reportedly made the brains of terminated children a somewhat regular part of their diets. But I think people oh, forget chimps. I'm glad we as a species have moved forward on mm. that. They aren't just violent pseudo vegans, they're legit predators. As in, they'll work together and coordinate attacks on prey like colobus monkeys. Yeah. Which, I've you know, seen that video. Oh, when they get that little thing to the ground, they just rip it apart, dude. And it's still screaming. Nature scary. Yeah. Fucking hell. Isn't all that different from getting disemboweled by a pack of Olympic level parkour zombies? They've also been known to hunt bush babies, that's a bush baby, by using Aww. spears. But with all the chimp carnage on this channel, them having carnivore tendencies should really be no surprise. The plot twist is even the pacifists of the great apes can be on predatory timing. Most people, including me about two weeks ago, see orangutans as a good vibes hippie vegetarians of the primate world. Which is almost true, ginger apes eat mostly the stuff you'd expect, you know, fruits, figs, leaves, maybe some termites to go with bird <laughs> eggs. But then you got this, an orangutan tearing apart a slow loris. The same one known for being venomous, which orangs figured out how to neutralize by using the loris's natural weakness. Blunt force trauma in the form of a bite through the skull. Damn. Damn. Jesus be fair, a meat-eating man of the forest is remarkably rare. But then again, chances are, before this video, a good number of y'all probably thought orangutans were only a threat to pieces of fruit. The same yeah. way a lot of people feel about toucans. While this roided up woodpecker, which is actually what toucans are, the more you know, has also been known to put bats on permanent leave from life. Damn! Now, so far, Fruit Loops commercials ain't showing I mean, you. with a beak that looks like that, it's not as surprising to me as some of the others on this video. Mmm. One of the many animals on the list of population control for baby birds. Oh, you thought that was a mammal thing? Well, two can play that game. Yo, who wrote this? I, I did. I wrote it. I mean, you know pelicans are trash compactors. Like, yes. It's, Sorry. It's not too far off from a pelican. It's even got a serrated beak. Like, I mean, I'm not that surprised about the toucan. Birds in general will eat virtually anything that doesn't pack them up in the process. Seagulls have been seen scarfing down squirrels yeah, with several horse, and I'm pretty sure there's at least one person in the I world. saw the rat one in, like, New York City. Uh, like, it was, it was like, in New York City. It's like, it, it, it was literally... It's a flying rat sea... eating a regular rat. Holy yeah, shit. Yeah, it's like, it's like, seagull devours rat whole. Seagull walked up to it, this big-ass rat was just in the middle of the street and it just goes <laughs> yep. I was like World down a dog thanks to this flying antichrist but the biggest example of feathery fuckery is what happens on Malchus Island this Ouch. is where we go full circle this island off the coast of South Africa is a nursery for the thousands of Cape Gannets nesting here which would probably be a good idea if someone ain't snitched to the pelicans because a population of white pelicans started traveling to Malgus just so they can swallow Gannet chicks whole, yep. often right in front of their parents. And if one was unlucky enough to have both parents out at sea, that's just an easy lick for this attack on Titan Pterosaur. It gets worse when you realize the half-digested, fully molested baby birds often end up being regurgitated for the pelican progeny to eat. And you thought they just ate fish. Nope. Predators come in many forms, and one island in the Pacific is home to one of the most unlikely. Because if you bleed on the wrong island, you can attract a pack of coconut crabs. Oh, now, these little, oh, these big bastards, they just... Those claws can snip your fingers off. Probably. Is this a oh no, really, that's how powerful their, their like, snipper is. The big one. ...manifestation in the form of crustacean attracted to blood. They're more than enthusiastic scavengers. In a study done on Nikomararu Island, it took the homicidal hermit crabs a week to completely undress a pig carcass down to the bones. But with pinchers strong enough to humble a coconut, the killer crabs are more than capable of catching their own prey, especially when they can climb trees and ambush sleeping birds. This video was taken of a crab after it had snapped the hollow bones of a seabird. The part Holy you crap! Yep. You might want to blur that one too. That's don't see is where a group of crabs arrived at the injured and incapacitated avian and proceeded to tear the bird apart. 
They've also been known to make a meal out of rats, cats, and maybe even humans. Because a grisly theory on the disappearance of <clears throat> Amelia Earhart was that a cluster of crabs got to her before anyone else could. Yeah, I heard about that. That's why there's no remains. And the worst part? There's no guarantee she was relieved from life by the time they got to her. Because even though Mr. Krabs on creatine normally goes for fruit, just like most animals on Earth, they're only as vegetarian as their options. Hug your loved ones, stay safe out there, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Oh, speaking of which, my eye's fine. I got LASIK, so I look like I lost the fight, but I also got the gift of sight, so it's I. Oh, nice. Peace out. Hey, nice, dude. Hope that works out for you in the long term. Uh oh. She's, she's a little nicer than you. Yeah, I guess. Oh, he's got a hook in him. That's... Wow. Yeah. We're saving the pelican. Oh, no. No. Let the bird go. Okay. Good birdie. Okay? <laughs> he's feeling much better now. <laughs> oh, Good child. Birdie. Oh, thank you, people. Now I'm off to murder young birds. Yes. Oh, child. <laughs> oh child, you have no idea the level of ugh, the level of cruelty that has just been unleashed. I mean, it's nature. It is, yes, nature can I be don't, terrifying. I, I mean, it scares me, but I don't judge too hard. Like I said, animals do what they gotta do. Yeah. Even if some of them were kind of lacking any kind of moral compass. <laughs> That's true. Well. It's like, right. I'm still glad they helped the pelican, you know. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Well, I especially don't like when, like, things that are man-made affect animals in a negative way, like fish hooks and stuff like that, so I'm glad they helped him. Yeah. Well, all right. I got nothing else to add to this. Just don't believe everything you read in school, everybody. And also, don't forget to uh, check out more everybody from... Everybody Ca- loves Chicken McNuggets. Yes. Also, don't forget to check out more from Casual Geographic. I click on his name in the title of the video. And until next time, I'm Nate. I am Nick. Y'all be good people. Be good. Uh, like y'all be good people. Be safe. Take care.